Well, good evening and welcome to the uh, eighth annual Parkland College Foundation Entrepreneur of the Year event. The, uh, the Parkland program uh, has really three main purposes in my mind. One is to honor our local Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, secondly, we celebrate the entrepreneurial spirit in our community. And third, most importantly, we provide dollars to Parkland College to promote programs that foster innovation and entrepreneurship. So let me touch just for a few minutes uh, on all three of those items. Number one, we're here to honor Jeff Hartman tonight as the 2017 Entrepreneur of the Year. Jeff co-founded JSM along with his brother Steve and Michael and later formed JSM Management to increase their portfolios of apartments, office buildings, and retail strip centers. Jeff attended SIU, Parkland College, and the U of I studying business. Today, the JSM company has 386,000 square feet, leasing to 91 businesses, including such national chains as McDonald's, Panera, Urban Outfitters, Federal Express, Starbucks, and the University of Illinois. JSM Apartments, the family's core business, has increased to more than 1,600 units in the campus area. Jeff additionally has been active in such nonprofit organizations as Campus Town 2000, the Don Moyers Boys and Girls Club, Mayo Clinic Foundation, and the University of Illinois Foundation. He and his, his wife, Sarah, have had, been married 36 years and have three great children, Patrick, Andrew, and Rachel, who are glad here all tonight. Terms that I've heard to describe Jeff Hartman include innovative, quality-focused, raising the bar, excellence, and family-focused. Jeff is known as somebody who adds value to all the enterprises that he gets involved with. Jeff also has fun and enjoys life. I remember when I moved back to town in the mid-1980s, um, I knew Jeff was a tennis player and a sailor, but I got invited to participate in a golf outing up at Bales Lake called the 47th Annual Bales Lake Golf Outing. And I really didn't know much about the event, but it sounded pretty distinguished, 47th Annual, been around quite a while. Well, it turned out to be several afternoons of, uh, of golf and also some libations and, and good times had by all. I later found out it was really about the third or fourth, but 47th annual sounded more distinguished. <laughs> so that's why they called it that. We'll hear much more about Jeff later, but I want to talk about two other purposes of the program. The second purpose of the program is to celebrate the entrepreneurial spirit in our community that promotes those willing to take risks and grow their businesses and improve the quality of life in the Champaign-Urbana area. We have many outstanding entrepreneurs in this area, and through Parkland and other programs, we would like to continue to foster and encourage entrepreneurship. I mentioned before this is the eighth year. It's hard to believe that it is the eighth year, but I'd like to at least mention the past recipients. In 2010, uh, our inaugural recipient was Clint Atkins. In 2011, it was Rick Stevens. 2012, Dwight Miller. Dwight could not be here tonight, but I believe his son Scott is here. So Scott, where are you? Great, thanks Scott. 2013, Rudy Frasca. 2014, Murray Wise. Murray is also with us tonight. Murray, where are you? I think Murray's here, so. Oh, sorry, thanks Murray. And then 2015, Steve Hillard. And two, last year, 2016, one of my favorite programs, Lori Gold Patterson. I know Lori's here tonight. Lori, where are you? Great, thanks Lori. We've also recognized two entrepreneurs for Lifetime Achievement Awards in the past. In 2014, Roy Lambert, along with Peter Fox, was one of the co-founders of the program. And in 2000, George Chaplin for all his significant work and accomplishments in our community. The third purpose of the program that I mentioned is to raise funds for Parkland College. To date, there's been about $870,000 dedicated to the entrepreneurship program at Parkland, with 530,000, over a half a million, being raised by the founders and the supporters of this particular banquet. Over $80,000 has been distributed in scholarship and program support. Your participation here tonight in this banquet helps uh, continue this program on to a successful marching forward. In the press release for this event, Parkland College talked about the program, and I thought one paragraph was extremely real, well written, which I'm going to share with you. The Parkland College Entrepreneurial Program is the result of the partnership between the college and community members committed to developing strong, educated leaders for today's workforce. The program provides scholarships to students demonstrating potential for growth as future managers, leaders, and innovators for immediate entry into industries and companies. Ultimately, the entrepreneurial program aims to increase the number of graduates with a strong work ethic and a commitment to excellence that supports existing industry, 
creating a more attractive community to the future employer. Parkland College delivers great value for the dollar. It's a great resource for our community. And it's now my pleasure to turn it over to the leader of that community, Tom Ramage. Tom has, in serving in his 10th year, I believe now as president, has demonstrated strong entrepreneurial leadership skills during his term. It's no secret that community colleges, like all higher education institutions in the state, are having dramatic cuts in their funding, presenting a number of challenges on all fronts. In light of this, though, Parkland is not sitting back, but is being entrepreneurial in the way it looks at growth going forward, focusing on those areas where there's opportunities for growth and seeing what it can do to expand it. Tom shared with me yesterday on the phone that they're potentially looking at 900 new student positions in connection with the dental hygienist program with a potential public-private partnership that could be funded, that could recruit students from out the state, not just in this area, but from out the state, bringing new people to our area. It's this type of thinking that will leave Parkland out front. As Tom says, we are making our future, so it's with my great pleasure that I turn it over to the president of Parkland College, Tom Ramage. I always appreciate Greg's introductions. Good evening, welcome on behalf of Parkland College, uh, the Board of Trustees. Uh, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to, again, the, the eighth annual Entrepreneur of the Year Banquet. Uh, let me say a, a couple of special thank yous uh, before we get started. First to uh, our, the mayors of both cities, I believe, are here today. I see Diane Marlin back there, Mayor of Urbana. Thank you for being with us. And Deb Fine, and I believe, is here as well, for, uh, Mayor of Champaign. Maybe we can give them a round of applause. Thank you. And you know, the best indicator that it's going to be an exceptional night is when Lou and Mary Henson are in the room. Lou and Mary, thank you. You both have a special place in Parkland's heart, uh, especially our gymnasium, and thank you for all you do for the community. Uh, a couple of others that I'd like to introduce, some members of our Board of Trustees. Uh, Mr. James Ayers from Monticello and Mr. Greg Knott from uh, St. Joe are with us today. And at the same table, two trustees that will forever be in our hearts, Mr. Lyndon Warfel from Tolono and Mrs. Bonnie Kelly from Champaign. Thank you so much for being here and for all you do. And of course, welcome and congratulations to Mr. Hartman, Mrs. Hartman, your family, your friends, your colleagues. Uh, we most appreciate your attendance uh, here this evening. Uh, it's a most well-deserved award. So I was absolutely, absolutely. So uh, it was a bit unusual. I was uh, reading the other day and I read across some good news uh, for a change and I thought I might share it with you. Uh, a report sponsored by Babson College and Baruch College, I had to look that one up, they're in New York City, uh, has been generating a report for about 17 years now about entrepreneurship. And it seems that uh, they found 27 million working age Americans, uh, or nearly 14% of that total population, are involved in starting up or running a business in the United States, a small business. They are entrepreneurs themselves. That's a record high for this study. The 16 years they've been doing it this year, that's the largest number that they've seen. And it's impre an impressive showing, uh, especially for uh, the, the economy that we have in the United States where it's far easier to work for somebody than it is to work for yourself, that's for sure. And it's certainly easier to capture market share in a developing country than one like the United States. And additionally, the report found that a growing number of people consider entrepreneurship an attractive option. I found that quite interesting. I thought entrepreneurs were always looked up to, but apparently that's uh, not been the case. 51% of working adults uh, believe that there exists good opportunities for starting up a business for the first time. And this year, that figure is 51% of the working population in the United States, the highest it's ever been. And better yet, 80% of those who plan to start businesses in the next three years are actually doing something about it, uh, which is the most encouraging news. They're leasing space, they're buying domain names and registering their companies, all the things you need to do to get started. And every day, students come to Parkland College <clears throat> to pursue passions that they don't yet know how they will employ when they finish their studies with us. And too many times, way too many times, students give up on those passions because it's hard, it's difficult. 
The challenges are significant and the skills that are required are many and diverse. So in 2009, Parkland College, along with the eight founders that Greg mentioned, he is one by the way, stepped up, stepped forward to promote a program uh, and a set of ideals that were designed to help our students and this community understand the importance of entrepreneurship. And they've done a fantastic job, as you can tell from the, the, the numbers that uh, Greg mentioned just a minute ago. So our founders understand and recognize that the ability to adapt, to change quickly, and to learn are perhaps two of the most or three of the most important skills that a human being can have, especially these days. Our entrepreneurship programs at Parkland College are designed to help students harness their passion, to take what they care most deeply about and look for ways to develop a business around that passion. And that's pretty darn exciting. Every day, Parkland College is there uh, for our entrepreneurs in development, whether they be in diesel, our diesel program, a surgical technologist, uh, a developer for a video game, or a, a small business owner. And there are, let me assure you, thousands more students with the potential to become remarkable, just like Jeff Hartman, and Murray Weiss, and Steve Hilliard, and Lori Gold Patterson, with a little push, a nudge in the right direction. The eight founders that have catalyzed this program, Greg introduced, they're listed in your program. If you see them, please thank them uh, for what they have done for Parkland Colleges for Parkland College. Our thanks to each of you uh, for your attendance tonight. You helped make our programs possible uh, going forward. And Mr. Hartman, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, the staff, and the students of our college, let me offer you our sincere congratulations and thanks as we celebrate the impact that you've had on this community and your history. Welcome, relax, enjoy the evening. You've earned it. In addition to the support of the Parkland Entrepreneur Network, this year, the foundation has provided funding for over 350 scholarships, including program assistance for a total of over a half a million dollars to support the mission of the college to engage the community in learning. Our Parkland Foundation board members are some of the most dedicated ambassadors and supporters of our students, and I'd like for them to stand as I call their name tonight. Carol Charlot, President. Jim Ayers. Jill Ahrens. Greg Knott. Dan Marker, and Scott Miller. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> the opportunity for our students in the Parkland Network, as well as students enhancing their skills for success, are made possible by the generosity of the Parkland College Entrepreneur Program, our sponsors, our donors, and each one of you here this evening. I'd also like to ask Carl Meyer to stand to be recognized. He has engaged these community leaders to create this partnership for Parkland College. Carl, would you please stand? I would also like to recognize the mayor of Rantoul, Chuck Smith, who is here this evening. Our corporate sponsors and individuals are important to the success of this program. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize and thank all of our corporate and individual sponsors who are listening to your program for their support of our event this evening. I'd like to thank our presenting sponsor, Mike Guth, and the team from Super Value. I'd also like to thank Cozat Asset Management and the News Gazette as our program sponsors. Our corporate sponsors, Central Illinois Manufacturing, Fox Development Corporation, and Murray Wise & Associates. Our event sponsors, Mark and Jill Ahrens, Busey Bank, First Mid-Illinois Bank and Trust, Frasca Flight Simulation, Hickory Point Bank, Martin Hood Freezing Associates, Pixo, RSM, Singleton Law Firm, Rick and Janine Stevens, Vertical Tower Partners, and Warden Martin. Let's give them all a big round of applause. So I thank you all for being here this evening. I'd like to turn it over now to Seamus Riley. He is our Vice President for Institutional Advancement. Seamus works closely with the Entrepreneur Program, and he's gonna share some highlights for this evening. Have a great evening. Good evening, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a wonderful event for the community. <clears throat> And I want to thank especially those folks who have been uh, instrumental in helping our students 
Not all of our students are going to be individual entrepreneurs, but all of our students are entrepreneurial. But most of you know that already because they work in your companies, they're your employees, they go on to become your managers and your leaders. And our faculty and staff are instrumental in cultivating that spirit of entrepreneurialism in the classroom by inviting you into our classroom, into our space, to talk about your experiences that you had in forging ahead and forming your own companies. We have an embryonic and organic process by which we en encounter students where they're at. We never know where our students are going to end up. One of my former English students is in the room tonight, and he does our audit at Parkland every year. So shout out to Wade. So you have to be very careful because you never know where our students are going to end up. But in three distinct ways, we have had some uh, exciting opportunities at Parkland that I want to recognize uh, three distinct um, areas. Uh, the first under the umbrella of the Parkland Entrepreneurial Network uh, and uh, the uh, Applied Media Promotions Group. And we have some students down the back. And they're involved with, uh, can you please stand, the students? Uh, thank you. Uh, they're involved with working with local uh, organizations, not-for-profits, as well as Parkland uh, units uh, to develop actual media promotions that are used. Uh, and Dean Geiken, who is sitting down the back, manager of our radio station, Dean, please stand. And another exciting venture, uh, Perimeter uh, Sound Recordings, which is in its second year and uh, had a concert on campus. Some of our students have gone on uh, already uh, to record in the process uh, forging careers. The Perimeter Road students, please stand if you're there. Thank you very much for being here. You never know when a parking entrepreneur is going to surface. We have cracked that truck out on campus this summer, and I was talking to the young lady who was uh, working, and she said, yes, I just graduated Parkland last semester, and now I'm the manager of the cracked truck. Uh, we're very lucky to have on our campus Matt Cho, uh, please stand, Matt. Matt is our entrepreneur in residence, has established a, a burgeoning space called Ground Zero, is already attracting uh, community members, and is looking for ways uh, in which he can engage with students to foster uh, that uh, entrepreneurial spirit. I want to thank especially Chris Foster, speaking of Foster down the back, who has put together the video for this event for many years, and we're now going to show a brief video to you uh, showcasing and highlighting some of the work that our Parkland students do, in large part thanks to the work that you do for us. Thank you. Kind of the idea with the record label is we kind of want to go back and forth between signing bands that are local but not necessarily Parkland students, right? Uh, maybe local established musicians and bands signing them, recording and releasing an album. But then we had the other idea that we would really like to start a project where we put a call out for Parkland student musicians and give them an opportunity to be recorded and promoted by a record label. I was helping out recording the other artists as well as being recorded myself and so it kind of like I would really love to be a musician but I love to produce music as well. This is my first opportunity to have my first song recorded. It's pretty great, pretty great experience. Uh, it's kind of surreal too when it all came together. So the space is called uh, Ground Zero. Um, basically it's housed under the Parkland Entrepreneur Network. In a nutshell, it's a resource for Parkland students, faculty, maybe even alums that are entrepreneurially minded. It's just hopefully a space where people or students can come and work on ideas or find resources or find other team members that might be interested in a similar idea. It's that kind of that skill set or that, that uh, attitude of an entrepreneur to always you know, question things or iterate or make assumptions and then change directions. I think those are the things that, you know, help entrepreneurs build something almost from nothing. Um, so Ground Zero is kind of, you know, the starting point. I haven't had to go through all those years of the things that he's run into that have, like, been downsides of his work and stuff like that. So I can kind of learn from hearing other people's experience. And then I, I, know, I know ahead of time, like, if I see a situation I've heard about, I'm like, I know how to react to that already and I haven't even gone through it because someone else has shared their experience with me. Someone like Rick Stevens brings a wealth of knowledge and success, uh, but I love when he describes for students the passion, persistence, and just being willing to take a calculated risk when it comes to entrepreneurship. 
and Rick being one of our past uh, Parkland Foundation Entrepreneurs of the Year uh, exemplifies that for the students. Well, now we get to the, the fun part of the evening where we get to honor Jeff, and we have several speakers uh, tonight to, to talk about Jeff, and, and um, the first is Greg Likens. Uh, Greg is the chairman of First Busey Corporation, which has five and a half billion in banking assets and about six billion in wealth management assets. He's also the co-founder of Armory Capital, a family investment office in Champaign that provides capital for companies in transition in the lower middle market. But beyond his private enterprise success, which is many, uh, Greg has also been a major uh, giver in the community and in the state in many ways, uh, being involved as the chairman of the board of the University of Illinois Foundation, as well as past chairman of Carl Foundation. Um, over the weekend, I saw Greg, and he shared with me that he had a big birthday uh, recently. And you know, with Greg, he, he's really a, a very admirable guy. He doesn't get older, he just gets better. He continues to give, continues to work hard, and continues to add value to the community. So, Greg, would you come up and share a few thoughts with us? It's not a birthday party, <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Greg is a terrific most of you know Greg Kozad. He's a terrific entrepreneur in his own right. <clears throat> He's a son. He is the son of a, just like Jeffrey is, a son of a terrific entrepreneur, V. Dale Kozad, who was an inspiration to a whole bunch of us and really a major supporter of Parkland in this whole concept. So thank you, Greg, and I appreciate your comments. <clears throat> I have a terrific honor to speak a little bit about my friend and his family. And I, as I was thinking at the table about this group of people in this room, it's really, uh, along with Parkland, really represents excellence. Each of you could be up here speaking about Jeff and the Hartman family. Actually, each of us could be commenting about many of you in this room. We have a lot of excellence in our extended community that is something to be tremendously proud of. Uh, some of us get out a bit and we hear, they keep hearing about this community of Champaign County and Champaign-Urbana and Parkland and the University of Illinois and they say, what's in the blood in this, in this area? And it is indeed something remarkable and the Hartman family represent the pinnacle of that characteristic. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have several components to my relationship with Jeff, uh, which gives me a good look into Jeff's life. My wife Margot, who I've been married to for 48 years, uh, became casual friends with Jeff and his delightful wife Sarah a number of years ago. <clears throat> We recall being at one of the legendary, wonderful birthday parties for Jeff's brother, Steve, and Jeff and Sarah casually mentioned, why don't you buy the house next door to us? I still wonder if their comment was just to keep the conversation going. <laughs> and interestingly enough, Jeff and Sarah owned that house. And uh, whether they meant it or not, we took them seriously. And as often happens in our lives, uh, we reacted somewhat impulsively, and on a handshake, we bought the house next door to Jeff and Sarah, from Jeff and Sarah. It was the best move we've ever made. We've lived there now for over 20 years. We are about seven feet south of Jeff and Sarah's house. <laughs> we've enjoyed living there next to this wonderful family and their terrific pets. A couple, a couple of those pets are no longer with us, a handsome Bernese mountain dog named Hans and Hans's boss, Dipper, <laughs> a little bitty dog in charge of the world. And now Ajax, another wonderful large Bernese, Bernese mountain dog. We've enjoyed them dearly. 
Living effectively on one's doorstep is one way to get to know people. Honestly, it's a bit of a reality show around our houses, a good one. We have a close-up view of each other's lives with our dogs and our grandchildren abounding. I've observed a few personal characteristics of Jeff that I'd like to share. <clears throat> Jeff is a pyromaniac. <laughs> he is a wood-burning fanatic. He has wo wood-burning in his backyard fire pit virtually every night they are in residence, and it smells really good. He also uses exotic technology to light those fires, <laughs> even without flames. I think they are perhaps by induction. As most of you know, Jeff's father, Lion, and his brothers, Mike and Steve, both studied ornamental horticulture. They taught Jeff well. He, along with Sarah, are extraordinary arborists and a they are an extraordinary arborist and gardener team. Their homestead always looks great, and they try not to make their neighbor to the south look too bad. <laughs> Jeff is an incredible chef. He puts his heart and soul into whatever he does, obviously, including cooking. I believe some of that expertise may have been derived from the, his brother Steve, who is a chef of renown. I expect to see a, an establishment, I hope to see an establishment uh, within the JSM retail portfolio one of these days, perhaps named Jeff's Rib House. His ribs are phenomenal. Some softer observations of my friend Jeff. Into Jeff's heart from the neighbor next door. Jeff has a deep love and un unconditional affection for his family. Not just Sarah, his delightful wife, not just his three terrific children, Andrew, Patrick, and Rachel, but their spouses and their five, soon to be six, wonderful grandchildren. His total, his affection also extends to his expanded family, his brothers and their families. It is indeed deep and sincere. Of course, he loves being with his family. It has not gone unnoticed in Champaign-Urbana that Jeff enjoys going to lunch, often with his family members. And it has been a tradition and I believe a legacy continuing as I observed the family at the Black Dog yesterday. <laughs> It's been a many decade tradition where business and fun have been discussed and plans have been made which obviously have been successful. I also observed the family love during the extraordinary grief that Jeff and the family endured with the loss of his and Mike's beloved brother Steve. I know Jeff and Mike to this day truly miss that wonderful fellow and the companionship of their brother and friend. Jeff brings a special culture to his family and business. He is strong, but a humble leader with a terrific sense of humor. He has a fun nature as he is self-deprecating and jokes about sometimes tackling projects with a goal of saving money, yet ultimately spending more, <laughs> which sounds familiar. He just can't seem to shed that absolute desire for excellence and perfection, and sometimes that costs him a little more money. Interestingly, along with several of you, we have been in a position through the years, uh, in addition to being a neighbor, to observe the Hartman family from a business and a financial perspective. What I've learned from that is uh, he is, of course, a tremendous business leader. As Chip Jorstad just mentioned to me today, Jeff is a terrific, strong leader, but he grants authority to others within the organization and really builds teamwork. Jeff is indeed a man of his word. From the day we closed on the purchase of our house on a handshake, 
through a myriad of years, and I'm sure the fellow bankers in this room would agree, of major Hartman financial activities, Jeff and his family have handed, handled all of those with absolute perfection. Not only does Jeff and his family develop and operate incredible real estate projects, but when Jeff speaks, his word is his bond. Congratulations, Jeff, on this award. It is very well deserved. I know you wish this honor would be bestowed not only upon yourself, but Mike and Steve as well, and the whole Hartman family and team. And for that matter, this award is being granted to your team. It's an honor to be able to talk about my friend and neighbor, and here's to another 20 years of living very close to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Greg, that was great. Uh, our next speaker tonight is Peter Fox, and I wanna recognize, first of all, though, Mrs. Fox, Alice Fox, uh, Peter's mom is with us tonight. I think this is the first banquet she's been at, so let's give her a round of applause for coming up here this evening. I'm gonna brag on Peter a little bit now. Uh, Peter's the founder of Fox Development Corporation and the manager of Fox Atkins, Devel Atkins Development here at the Research Park, as well as the I Hotel, which I think many of you realize. Um, Peter has an incredibly distinguished background and a variety of entrepreneurial activities. Um, but I, what I would say a little bit about Peter, having gotten to know him, is that I think 50 years from now, uh, when you look back in this community and what it's become, uh, a lot of the seedlings are going to be because of Peter Fox. Uh, Peter has a constant uh, drive to improve things, to, to create new business, to create new ventures. And one example I'll give before bringing him up was uh, Peter was very close with my dad, uh, V. Dale Cozad, and uh, when the, uh, Peter came up with some ideas to try and honor his memory, there was a lecture and scholarship program at the U of I, which uh, it still goes on and is very nice, but Peter wanted more. And Peter created a program through the College of Engineering uh, to this day, now has this last year had over 100 student teams competing uh, in a business plan competition. And what really struck me about it, and this is really at the, at the foot of what Peter did, uh, in 2004, one of the winners or one of the recipients uh, was a local guy named Adam Evans, who 2014, 10 years later, sold his company for just under 300 million. So, you know, when you, when you encourage entrepreneurship, you never quite know where it leads, but, but if you do it, there may be some promising results down the road. So, Peter, uh, being a great entrepreneur, I, I has some things to say about Jeff, and I thought I would come up and do that tonight. It's a little hard to follow Mr. Likens. Uh, so precise and uh, on point. But uh, before I start, I wanted to also second what Ellen said about Carl Meyer. Carl was one of the reasons that my wife and I got interested in Parkland, frankly. He was consistent, persistent, and always selling Parkland. So it's uh, great to see you, Carl. And uh, when we started this a few years ago, the other person that I wanted to recognize tonight is Newt's brother, Donald Dodds. Uh, Donald, along with uh, Dale, were incredible mentors for me personally. And one of the things I wanted to suggest about Parkland is when you recognize the trustees and particularly people like Jim Ayers and others that um, have consistently been present it's oftentimes easy to come up with an idea. I come up with a lot of ideas, and at the end of the week, I haven't done much about it. But this program tonight would not be where it is serving the students, this community, and the area that um, Parkland serves without the consistent, enduring support from a great leader like Tom and previously Zalima and the Board of Trustees. So 
I wanted to recognize that because absent persistent support, things just don't happen. Think about Dale Kozad, and I really didn't know Dale. He came up to me on a driving range one day at the country club when I think I was 14 or 15. Not many people when you're that age pay much attention to you, and Dale was always great to me. After that, he included me, presented business opportunities to me. Every day, he approached his family and the community with inspiration, persistence, and he always had great ideas. He had a sheet of paper on his desk, and I watched that. And so it was easy to name this program after Dale, and I think what it's become is something that Jeff really embodies in some ways differently than the previous awardees. The first awardee was a partner of mine that I frankly was lucky to be partnered with because I don't think that I really matched him, but he was kind enough to include me 50-50 and he didn't question me much, which was really surprising. And I thank Spencer and Todd for still allowing me some runway. But um, tonight, Jeff, if you look at this community, there were several assets that frankly weren't much of value, and I would say Green Street was one, and East Campus was another. You look at Green Street 10 years ago, a lot of people talked about ideas, including several chancellors, but absent the Hartmans, Green Street wouldn't mean much, nor would East Campus, and I'm talking specifically about the area around Craner Performing Arts. And the reason why that's important is that this university competes with many, many other places domestically and internationally for students. Absent the best students, you're not going to get the best faculty. The faculty might feel otherwise, but frankly, absent the best students, you don't get the best faculty. And without changing Green Street, I don't think we would get the best students. I think they'd go to UT Austin. They'd go many other places like Madison. So the Hartmans single-handedly changed that. What that's done is it's allowed downtown Champaign to be vibrant because the students have the disposable income to spend there. It frankly has made the research park possible. So I look at um, Jeff, his brothers, and say, absent doing this, we could talk about a lot, but not much would have happened. So I guess the other thing I would say about an entrepreneur is a lot of them are kind of one-trick ponies. They have a good idea doesn't last very long and they're celebrated for that. But to me, the mark of a great entrepreneur is somebody that builds something that's lasting. And you look at Jeff and you look at the succession and oftentimes people don't have much of a succession plan. So I see Patrick, Andrew, Rachel, and I look at three people that'll probably be up here in the next 15, five, 10, who knows. So thank you for allowing me to speak. Thanks, Peter. And now we get the family perspective. Uh, as mentioned before, Jeff and Sarah have three kids, Patrick, Andrew, and Rachel, and tonight we're going to get to hear from Patrick. Uh, a little bit about Patrick Hartman. Uh, growing up in Champaign, he attended Centennial, attended Parkland, played go golf at Parkland for one year before going to the University of Illinois. After college, he became involved with JSM as a project manager working in the accounting department, doing a financial analysis for properties, and developing a particular skill in property valuation analysis. Patrick, uh, one thing I've learned about the Hartman Enterprises uh, is that really uh, they're, they're partners in some deals and, and not in others, and Patrick himself became quite an entrepreneur along with his brother Andrew, starting out with a 131 efficiency unit, which they put a million six into, renovated, and doubled the value of in short order. Today, Patrick and Andrew have acquired over 500 apartments with $65 million in total acquisition costs. In essence, Patrick and Andrew have built their own entrepreneurial venture, having been mentored by their father, Jeff, and have learned to make all the financial arrangements and help handle everything involved with the property, including acquisition, renovation, budgeting, financing. Uh, in listening to Patrick, you can tell he's very proud of what his father has taught him, giving him the ability to grow and build his own entrepreneurial enterprise. Patrick, would you come up and please share some words?
Thank you, Greg. Well, it's an honor and a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak on behalf of my father as he accepts this prestigious award. I know Dad is humbled, but he would never ask to be recognized for his entrepreneurial success, which is why he is so deserving of it. I've even heard him say it's more of a family award than one of personal achievement. It's this mentality that has made my father successful. Dad's refusal to acknowledge self-achievement has allowed him to prosper. Growing up as one of three boys, he and his family moved constantly in search of new business, constantly trying to stay ahead of the financial curve. This modest lifestyle not only taught Dad to embrace conservatism, but also challenged him to provide better for himself and for his family. He always says, you can't control how much money you make, but you can always control how much money you spend. <laughs> for instance, <laughs> since, since Benny's opened in town, the discounted cost of Beef Eater's Gin has sent his world into a state of shock. <laughs> I have the unique honor of knowing Jeff intimately as a father, a mentor, and as my business partner. You know, growing up in the Jeffrey Hartman household meant lots of love, lots of laughter, and of course, tons of unpaid manual labor. <laughs> and I used to dread waking up early to work with Dad on the weekends. In retrospect, I now understand the transcendent nature of strong work ethic and how it applies to every aspect of life. Dad taught me very early on that anything worthwhile requires discipline, hard work, and the ability to withstand frustrations. I attribute many of my personal and professional accomplishments to these vital lessons. As a father, Jeff is second to none. He applied his tenacious work ethic to the positive development of his kids as he does with every aspect of his life. Growing up, Dad had a saying, if you have a weakness, work tirelessly until that weakness becomes your strength. My father lives this motto every day and refuses to stop self-improving. Perhaps the most important lesson, however, hard manual labor taught me was to quickly find a desk job. <laughs> so I've been thrilled to learn from Jeff as a business professional for the past eight years, not only working for, but alongside as partners. When I started, the concept of principal reduction and interest payments, it was all sort of lost on me until Dad said, you know, Patrick, every time you pay down principal, your net worth goes up by that amount too. So I kind of caught on quickly after that. Anyone in a family business understands the strain between personal and business relationships. Although JSM is no exception, I don't trust anyone more than my father and my family as partners. Where so many family businesses crumble under the pressures of egos and selfishness, our family business thrives under the culture of togetherness. Dad is at the heart of that culture, expecting and demanding family loyalty. I savor most of the time Dad and I spend walking our projects, brainstorming different ways to renovate, solving construction problems, and formulating business models. Working with Dad as contemporaries means the world to me. He is one of the most competitive men I've ever met as well. You can't be so. You can't, you can't accomplish what he has accomplished without being so. However, one of my favorite quotes from Dad is, in business, your competition doesn't have to fail for you to succeed. That taught me to be a humble businessman and to wish the best for everyone, even if it is the competition. The saying reflects how Dad sees the world and the dignity he believes life should be lived with. I couldn't have a better father growing up, a better mentor to learn from, or a more loyal and dedicated business partner. So in closing, I just want to say thank you so much for recognizing my father with this award. He is truly deserving, even though he would never say so himself. Congratulations, Dad. I actually met Jeff in this very building that used to be Champaign National Bank 40 years ago. I was right out of uh, grad school, became a commercial lender, 
started working with Jeff and his brothers. Uh, in those days, uh, they were starting out and they were using the skills they got from their uh, father, uh, Lion Hartman. I know from a very early age, Jeff had the opportunity to do work on construction sites and to uh, even start building his own buildings, I think, uh, in his late teens or early 20s, uh, which is a pretty rare uh, place to be for somebody of that age. But his ability to do that and to do it successfully, I think, was in a large measure the result of the uh, values uh, and the experience that were passed on to him from his father. I think Jeff and his two brothers, Steve and Mike, started out a number of years ago in, in kind of a, a low, uh, low profile way and, and since then they've built their business. JSM has become a major, a major player. It's a pretty powerful organization and it, it just keeps going on and on and on. Seems to be getting bigger. They've transitioned into the next generation. Knowing them through business and then working for them, I have become uh, what I would count a friend of the family. And you know, it's, it's pretty uh, impressive to just see the dynamics and how they function day to day and how the entire family is involved and has their own role within the company. Dad values uh, family loyalty more than uh, more than anything. Is uh, my grandmother I've never met uh, taught him that, and uh, that's something that he holds about, very valuable. Given that this is a family company, we, you know we we work pretty closely together, so um, it's a pretty close knit thing. So it's actually kind of fun to be able to have a, a father and a, a business partner on this on the same package. When I first moved back to the area, it's like I was young and new to the business community and I used to have lunch with Jeff and Steve and Mike on a fairly routine basis and you know I'd throw my business problems out and use them as a sounding board and you know the nice thing about Jeff and the family, they were very open with suggestions and comments and you know they were just good solid counsel and you know gave me a good backdrop uh, helped me make better business decisions early in my career. We had a, a lot of fun too it wasn't all work. Uh, we would uh, frequently meet for uh, business meetings at the uh, White Horse Inn on Green Street uh, over lunch and uh, I'd sip uh, my Pepsi and and uh, Jeff and his brothers uh, drank uh, multiple pitchers of a yellow liquid, which I guess was Mountain Dew. But uh, we had always a lot of fun, even though it was work. They're just tremendous guys. I think it's amazing that the things that uh, the Hartman family and Jeff have been able to do to make both the city of Champaign and the U of I campus really grow over the last 15 to 20 years especially. Many of the new additions to campus were a result of JSM properties or uh, JSM buildings and you know uh, it really helped kind of take the U of I campus to the next step in terms of student housing. Dad's always been sort of a trailblazer when it comes to new ideas and, and he's very innovative with the real estate business that we're involved with. Um, it's always a, uh, it, it's always fun to watch him do what he does. There's so much uh, that Jeff does that's, that's really um, uh, admirable in terms of how he approaches business, but I'd say the thing that sort of uh, pops out at me at the most is his sort of pervasive attitude of excellence in, in everything he does. And, and Jeff told me pretty early in this process that um, the big uh, details tend to take care of themselves because everybody's paying attention to those things. But it's the small things that really make the difference uh, in terms of the quality of a finished product. One of the things that always impressed me about Jeff and JSM in general was for any of the projects they did in the Champaign-Urbana community or developments that they were doing, they had a, uh, a real sense of they wanted quality at the end of the day. They wanted a project that they could take pride in when they were finished. They wanted to have something and not provided value just for them, but provided value for the community. I think Jeff has uh, established new standards of aesthetics and, and taste, particularly in the campus area. And what I've observed with Jeff and, and his family's uh, transactions is they're willing to take time to do things the right way. Uh, they're willing to spend more money to do things, again, the right way. They're not just short-term investments, but they're investments that are going to uh, be in our, in our community over the long haul. To me, I'm old school. The best measurement 
of a man's uh, place on earth. This is the success of his family. And Jeff has a wonderful wife in Sarah. Um, she's gracious, enthusiastic, just a wonderful person. And, and the amount of pride Jeff must have every day when he sees uh, Rachel, Patrick, and Andrew come into the business. Uh, they've joined this business. Uh, they're starting to run it. And quite frankly, they're reaching out and growing the business. So uh, Jeff has to be an extremely satisfied person and with a lot of pride for his family. From the time I've met the Hartmans, it's very apparent that although Sarah may not be involved in the day-to-day -day business of the company, that she's su very supportive of Jeff and the JSM Enterprise. And you know, it's really neat because she's one of the warmest people you would meet in the community. Jeff is really committed to his family. That's, uh, that's apparent on several levels. Um, obviously with his immediate family, um, his love for this business and uh, all of the, the investment that he's made just of himself uh, has now played out in the next generation uh, of his family that are now entering this, this business as well. And the enthusiasm and excitement that they demonstrate for this, I think is in a large measure uh, from the things that they've learned from Jeff o over the years. I think Jeff's always been very sensitive to what he does uh, reflects not only on himself, but it reflects on his family as well. And I think he has gone to great lengths to make sure that all of his actions in business uh, reflect well. The whole Hartman family is committed to doing a great job in this area, and I think their own children see it, and they see the, the value of the Champaign-Urbana community and the things that they've been able to create over the years, so I couldn't be happier for them. I've watched their kids grow up, and it's fascinating to see them grow and turn into the, the quality caliber business people that they are, uh, as their parents did before them. Dad wants to see all of us uh, and his family succeed, so he basically uses that as a, uh, a, I would say, as a platform to try to find ways for everybody to succeed within a family. It's a family business. It's a real credit to JSM and all the people that work there that family businesses survive. Some do, some don't. Some are ugly, some are not so ugly. But uh, in this case, it, it seemed to work for everybody involved. And uh, it's, it's a great honor, and it's, uh, it's a real, uh, it's a real honor for the people that work there and also, also for Jeff. But I, I guess I'd conclude by saying I'm honored too to have Jeff as my friend. Jeff, would you please come up and receive the award? Jeff Hartman, the 2017 Entrepreneur of the Year. Well, thank you all very much. Um, I'm uh, obviously pretty blown away by all of this. Uh, I don't see how anyone could possibly live up to <laughs> these, this many kind words. I, uh, um, I'm certainly honored. I'm truly humbled by all of this. Uh, I, Greg, want to start out by pointing out that uh, I, I, knew, uh, I knew Dale very well. Dale was a, a wonderful man. Uh, a uh, fine entrepreneur, and and uh, um, and I, I know that whenever you were on the golf course, you really wanted him to be your partner because uh, he was a tremendous golfer. And and how wonderful it must be for you to every year be able to uh, give an award in your father's name. So, how about a hand for uh, for Dale Cozen? I want to thank Peter for his kind words. Uh, um, I really appreciate that, and and I I want to include Kim here on a personal note because uh, uh, Kim introduced son Andrew with Whitney, and and they became married, and they have a couple beautiful kids. So so Kim, thank you for for being the effective Cupid that you were. <laughs> so, um, Greg Likens, my goodness. Uh, 
I just, uh, what a bunch of wonderful things you, you've said. I wish I could live up to that. But in terms of, uh, of being your neighbor, we, uh, we just love living next door to the Lycans. And uh, uh, we've had a wonderful time together. And, and I'm sorry about Ajax, really. He barks constantly. I, we can't seem to stop him. He's, he is on chemo, actually, but uh, very expensive injections. Uh, <laughs> And they seem to be working. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, Patrick, I had no idea you could publicly speak so well. My goodness, I, I'm blown away by that. I just uh, really, really nicely done. Um, I want to thank the Parkland Foundation and Tom Ramage. Uh, Tom, it was nice getting to know you earlier in the year at breakfast we had together and. Um, I actually attended Parkland, as I mentioned. That was when it was downtown. So I don't know how many people remember that. Probably quite a few. But uh, um, and it was a tremendous school when I went to it. I, I really uh, learned a lot of uh, business law, and I think an accounting course. Uh, so anyway, um, let's see, uh, Ellen Schmidt. Um, Ellen put a lot of this together, and uh, I, uh, I have to apologize to Ellen because a lot of the information I was supposed to come up with, I was always a few days late. So, um, but it came together nicely, and what an amazing video that was part of the information coming up with some of those pictures. Uh, uh, the one picture, I don't know if you remember, that I was fishing as a little boy. That was uh, Doctor's Pass in Naples. Anyone know where, about Doctors Pass in Naples? Well, it's all high-rises now. And, and that looked like it was a deserted island, which at the time it was. So that tells you how old I am. <laughs> so um, let's see. Truly humbled by all of this. And I know it's been stated repeatedly about JSM. It, it definitely stands for Jeff, Steve, Mike. and. You know, it's, it's not just a cliche that I say that because we grew up together. We learned the construction business together. We, we, we took chances together. We truly were each other's best friends and, and it was so sad six years ago to lose Steve. I, uh, it, what a gifted um, businessman Steve was and JSM has never really fully recovered from that but um, we do go on. The next generation as has been stated is, is moving in and, and that's that's great, but, uh, but that was a tremendous uh, blow to us. Um, <clears throat> I can just barely read this. I better put some glasses on. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the family business includes, uh, it, the video uh, talked a lot about uh, my kids, but believe me, their, their nieces and nephews are fully involved in JSM, uh, and many of them are here tonight, so I, I don't want to lose sight of that as well. Um, uh, so it is kind of interesting, we grew up in construction. We were our father's uh, construction crew, and uh, we did things like hand dig footings. Can you imagine that, Newt? <laughs> hand dig footings, and uh, pour all of our own concrete, lay all of our own concrete blocks, all of our own carpentry. So we did learn about construction. So later, when we started building bigger buildings, we knew what was going on. We knew when we talked to subs what what to do. We knew what to watch out what to watch out for. So, um, I want to say a little bit about the history of my dad. It gives you a little better idea about how we got to where we are. Everyone knows that I think it was in the paper that Dad wanted to become a florist. But before that, he went for a year at Illinois Wesleyan, and he was to be the third in the line of Methodist ministers. So my grandfather and my great-grandfather, both Methodist ministers, well, Dad was supposed to do that, and he spent a year uh, in Bloomington at, uh, at Illinois Wesleyan. He decided that wasn't going to work out. <laughs> and so he transferred to Illinois and got a degree in ornamental horticulture. And he, he made quite a run of that, actually. He, uh, he had a, a, a bunch of greenhouses and ran tool, and, and it was really relatively successful. Um, and then he went off to the war. And when he came back, uh, the economy had totally changed. I guess flowers weren't in as big at that, at that point as uh, homes were. So, so he, he looked around and decided he'd better become a, a general contractor. And, uh, and he built homes for 20 years. He would say much later that he never really made much more than a good, sal or a good wage during that period. And, and so he, he wanted to do something different. So 
What did he choose? Build a dog and suds in Winter Haven, Florida. I mean, I have no idea where that came from, believe me. Um, but I was age eight at the time. I thought it was a wonderful idea. It was my favorite restaurant. So, so the, the day it opened, uh, I, had, uh, I had root beer, I had coney dogs, I had, I had root beer floats, I had orange slush. I got sick. <laughs> uh, you could probably see that coming, but it, a true story, actually. And uh, so, and, and every, I think he actually made some money at that for a while, but that fall, Hurricane Donna hit, hit uh, Florida and uh, knocked all, the, all of the uh, citrus off of the trees, and Central Florida had a recession, and everything went boom, south. So, um, Dad somehow, I have no idea how he did this, traded the dog and suds for a gift store in, in Fort Myers on the uh, uh, Tamiami Trail. Well, that wasn't really much of a better business for us than the dog and suds had been. And, and uh, so shortly thereafter, we moved, to, uh, moved back to Champaign. And uh, with very, very little money, believe me, uh, that represented the third school I had gone to in fifth grade. So we were moving rather rapidly. Steve, uh, third, third uh, school Steve had been in 10th grade. And Mike had to quit going to the University of Florida because Dad could not afford to send him. And uh, Dad, for years after that, just, he, just, he just labored over that and that he had, that Mike could not go to, go to college. I mean, so we had, some, we had some real financial issues at the time. We moved back to Champaign and Dad started, uh, we couldn't be building houses, there were, we were not in a financial position to do that, so Dad, Dad started anything, room additions, uh, put, put screen doors on, anything. And he, he did that for several years and he would say later, he goes, I made more money doing that than uh, the homes he had built and, and by quite a, quite a wide margin. So, uh, and so he, he realized he wanted to get into investment property and and he designed a 24-unit apartment building, uh, 505 East Clark Street, that Andrew currently owns. And that is the first building that started the string of uh, properties that JSM currently manages. Um, and, uh, um, well, the Champaign National Bank, it was very, just coming up with the money was amazing. So, uh, uh, Jan, you were talking about Champaign National Bank, and um, that was any time you develop good banking connections, that's just so important in your business. And um, Dad was shocked that they actually gave him a commitment for it. But uh, um, so let's see. So that was 1968, and uh, we all. I was 17 at the time, and Dad built more and more buildings at the time. And about 1974, uh, our mother passed, and uh, um, so Mike and Steve and I actually inherited 505 Clark. That's been owned by oh, six or seven entities before Andrew got it, uh, bouncing around. And um, but that's when we created a company called JSM. And uh, shortly thereafter, we created JSM Management to, to manage all of our properties. And over the, over the next basically 49 years, from 68 till now, JSM really has, has accumulated approximately 1.2 million uh, square feet. And while that seems like a, I, I think that seems like a fairly substantial number, what I'm most proud of is the locations. And most people know our locations are, are pretty extraordinary. I, you know, when you, own, when you own from Wright Street to 6th on the, on the north side of Green, pretty much the whole block, and about half a block going west. And oh, anyway, we have a lot of property in that area, and uh, that, that I'm very proud of. So um, <clears throat> I just want to briefly talk about uh, some of JSM, just real quick, JSM departments here. Uh, we have an architectural department uh, that uh, is headed by Scott Kunkel, who's here tonight. Um, that has actually been such an effective department that we sub a lot of that work out. Dodd's company uh, utilizes it uh, on your EpiWorks buildings and uh, Hicks Gas. Sean, we've done quite a bit of work for Hicks Gas uh, and, and all kinds of companies. I can't even name um, Scott. Would you list a few <laughs> off? But um, our accounting department. Well, with all these different entities, I guess to some degree you'd have to say it has to do with uh, uh, tax law. We, we actually file, our accounting department files 35 different tax returns. I mean, can you, I, I didn't even know that until I asked her this morning. I thought it was 20-something. <laughs> so anyway, it was 
You just you lose track of these things. We today we have a, a licensed electrician, licensed plumber. We have a very extensive painting uh, staff, five or six or seven painters. HVAC uh, is very extensive at JSM. We can uh, we can pretty much take care of all of our own properties, except that when we keep adding all of this and we keep doing the remodeling. Like I think right now, even though we have a licensed electrician, we are employing four different electric companies on jobs right now. So we are, we are growing, there's no question, and, and there is quite a lot of uh, need for outside help at JSM. So, um, I always think it's kind of interesting to define entrepreneurial, what that means. I, I've heard, heard someone say once that, that uh, uh, it's someone that maybe has several strengths and uh, maybe it converges on the, on the industry of their choice. Uh, certainly hard work's important. Uh, um, uh, being willing to uh, work at all hours or just refusing to, refusing to succumb, I, you know, certainly that's in there. But, uh, um, <clears throat> but it's also important to have a very stable home life. And, to that end, I have to thank my wife, Sarah. Uh, she has just been amazing through the years, and uh, so how about an applause for my wife, Sarah? <laughs> I usually say uh, t 29 wonderful years, and out of 36 years of marriage, that's not bad. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, that's from John Healy. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> little footnote there. I um, also want to recognize uh, Laura Hartman. Um, Laura is my, my sister-in-law, but more like my sister. And, uh, uh, you know, I've known Laura since Laura was taller than me, and Laura's not really that tall. So, <laughs> so But uh, Laura, Laura has been there for every step of the, of the way for JSM. Uh, Rainbow View? Uh, uh, Ra Rainbow View, the duplex? Yeah, yeah. Um, Steve and Laura built, right after they were married, a duplex, and Laura was there pounding, pounding nails and cutting boards, and she was there all these long hours. So Laura has been involved in JSM for a very long time also, and I uh, really wanted to um, point that out. So um, um, I really would like to, basically I want to close, and it's a, with, with what I really consider a, one of my favorite definitions of an entrepreneur, and, and that comes from Brother Steve. Uh, Steve had a very unique way of looking at a lot of things. He, his humor was amazing. Uh, as I said, a very, very gifted um, businessman. But, so Steve's definition of an entrepreneur was an individual who will go to practically any extent to avoid holding down a normal job. <laughs> and, uh, and I think I think that does kind of that does kind of ring true, actually. So, so anyway, I, I don't really have any more comments. Thank you so very much. What a what an amazing amazing evening this is, and uh, I just uh, uh, I'm just amazed that uh, that that this could happen. I uh, again I I'm very touched by it all. Thank you so much. I promise I'll be brief. Uh, again, well-deserved, great congratulations to Jeff. Uh, your story, your commitment, your uh, contribution to this community is, is obvious, and uh, we're all better for it, for having uh, you as part of our lives, uh, directly or indirectly, and you have a wonderful family. Um, I want to take just a quick second to thank uh, two special individuals. We've talked about them a, a couple of times, but it bears repeating. Uh, Greg Kozad and Peter Fox, in particular, uh, are largely responsible for the fact that this is the eighth annual Entrepreneur of the Year banquet. Uh, without their uh, forethought, their leadership, uh, their pressure, their push to make this bigger and better each year, we wouldn't be at the numbers that we are and our students wouldn't be the recipients of so many scholarships and so many opportunities at Parkland College. So my deep felt thanks to both of you, both of you for all that you've done. Uh, lastly, I want to thank you, each of one of you. I think I know almost everybody in the room by now. Uh, you are all very good supporters of Parkland College. I see you at many, many events. 
Uh, the institution is what it is because of you, because of this community and your support of Parkland. I want to tell you that no matter what's going on in Springfield, no matter what you read in the paper, our institution, your institution is strong and it will continue to be strong for another 50 years. Thank you for all you do and I hope you have a great evening and a safe drive home. Thanks for joining us.